Consequence Podcast Network. Welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith With, an audio interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville, Consequence of Sound, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Today I'm talking with Joseph Arthur. He's got a brand new band called Arthur Buck. He is the Arthur in it. Who's the Buck? That's Peter Buck of REM fame. Joe tells me about how the entire project came together and some stories behind a few of the songs on the album, too. We also get to talk a little bit about how he's always been circling around the REM camp, doing various projects with just about every single member in that band. And there's an update on his next solo record as well. It's Kyle Meredith with Joseph Arthur of Arthur Buck. Uh, hey, man, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm all right. So, Arthur Buck, it's the new band. It's the latest time that Joseph Arthur has teamed up with R.E.M., and we'll get to that in a minute. But but first, I'd love to hear the story of how Arthur Buck came about. So, well, it started by me going, I mean, first of all, I haven't really had a project like this with any other member of R.E.M., <laughs> by the way. <laughs> well, you know, it's because you played with Mike Mills. He backed you up uh, on the live shows. So I've joked with you that you've slowly tried to piece R.E.M. back together. I, I wouldn't mind being I wouldn't mind having a hand in that. Maybe that this will result in a, a reunion somehow, which would be wonderful for me because I'm a huge fan. And then uh, yeah, and then Michael covered in the sun. My collaboration with him really was singing a version of in the sun with him. That was for Katrina. But yeah, I guess I have a, a close connection with REM in, in a way. I mean, for a start, I, they were one of my favorite bands when I really first discovered songwriting. And my favorite REM record is Reckoning, I think. That's my personal favorite. That's the one that I really fell in love with. So, And plus, I kind of started singing songwriting in Atlanta, so in the South. And so they were obviously, I mean, they were big everywhere, but in the South, they were, you know, sort of the favorite sons in a way. So they just they just loomed very large. And then uh, Peter Buck, when I, when I started putting out my own record, Peter Buck came, he was the first member I met because he started coming to my shows. He came, when I would play in Seattle, he would show up. He played this little small place called the Baltic Room. And even like as my first record, he was already coming to the shows. And then I ended up opening up for them when they toured Around the Sun which was in 2004, I think, and that was in Europe. And I did about 12 shows with them in Europe. And Peter would play with me then. He would come out when I did In the Sun, and he would play like Ebo or something. And then he started doing the Todos Santos Music Festival, which is this festival he does in Mexico to benefit the Palapa Society, to like, you know, help schools out and stuff like that, help build the school. So I got to participate in that for like four or five years. I've been doing that for a while. And we always talked about writing together, writing songs together, and just never really did. I mean, I, I had this one song called Where Is My Van when I lost my van at <laughs> one point. <laughs> yeah, and he played on that. <laughs> and, then, uh, and he was in that video. And then we did David Letterman together when David Letterman announced his retirement, and we did Walk on the Wild Side. Me, Mills, and Peter did uh, Walk on the Wild Side. That that was another event, and then I. But to get to how this started, I randomly was going to Mexico just to pick up my dobro, and I had no idea that he was there. I was in L.A. and I had been there. This was like almost a year ago now, and I was in L.A. getting ready for this art show I was going to do, and I had been recording for my solo stuff, and. Honestly, it was almost a financial decision, and I was kind of sequestered in L.A. for a while, and I had been staying with a friend for, like, sort of longer than I already should have, but I needed to hang out in L.A. for a little while longer for this art show, and to ship my Dobro would have probably cost, like, five, 600 bucks, but to just get a plane ticket and go to Toto Santos and get it, and also maybe just hang out for, like, a week was, like, 170 bucks. So I was like, okay. I mean, honestly, I was, like, struggling with money at the time. So I was like, you know, let me just do that. And I told one of my friends in New York that I was going there, and she's friends with Peter named Julie Penabianco, and she said, oh, my God, Peter's going to be down there. And then I get a text from Peter saying, hey, uh, uh, you know, you're in Toto's, let's go play a show. 
at the Toto Santos Inn, and I I came with my Dobro the next day to Peter's place, and I never left. That's it. We started writing songs, and it just kind of flowed. We were both just there. He he was there down the exact same time as I was. They left the same. I did basically. I think one day apart. By the time we left Mexico, we had five songs and played this little festival in Mexico in front of like 40 people during the day. And then he met me up in LA to do my art opening. uh, Because they were driving, him and Chloe were driving. And so they were going to drive through LA back to Portland. And um, they met me at the gallery at the opening. And we wrote I Am The Moment at the sound check. Like, oh, he was playing guitar when I walked in. And he was like, oh, check this out. And I started singing, I am the moment. He started singing, waiting for you. <laughs> it's like out of a movie. So it was kind of like, I don't know. It was just, we found a flow of writing together that was pretty effortless because it was like he was coming up with the changes and the arrangements. And I was just coming up with the top line. And it just really worked. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of easy. It still is. Like, we've been in Portland writing new songs and it just kind of works it's like it's like he's such a melodic guitar player to write over his changes is really like just kind of really super fun it'd be like if you you compared it to like surf if you were a surfer like finding really easy waves to surf on in a collaboration especially one that involves an album made from scratch uh, neither of you having made demos beforehand specifically for this project Uh, maybe you've known peter for decades now but you still have to get really personal with someone to do this. Uh, I've always considered co-writing like <laughs> like a form of non-sexual sex in a way. Yeah, the, like I think you're like speaking on the fact that there's the vulnerability in it. That would be the relationship I think like with like to with sex. There's so creativity, there's vulnerability. Like you're both like kind of exposing certain aspects of yourself in a way like just even trying even if you attempt something there's a vulnerability there so it's like and I guess with somebody uh, you know yeah like with people that are very powerful creatively like obviously Peter is it becomes even more daunting I guess but the, but the thing is is you just sort of like let that go and you just kind of go into it and go for it and that's what we did and it was just uh I guess it was the right time in the right place. I want to bring up that first song. So, I Am The Moment, it's the first song you all did together. Uh, I know you tend to write in a stream of consciousness occasionally, but the very first line we hear, becoming free, it's not easy as I'd like it to be. Uh, it's one of those things like, like that's an entire story in one line. Ooh. Well, yeah, I guess you're right, because that's a lot, you know. Um, I've been going through a heavy-duty transformation over the last, like, couple of years, I guess, or year and a half or two years. Yeah, like, a lot has gone on in my life that's been quite dramatic and unexpected and also, like, horrible and wonderful at the same time, you mm-hmm. know, like... Um, and transformative and dark night of the soul. And I don't want to just like rattle off a bunch of cliches to say it, but it would require like a, you know, you know, at least like Playboy sized interview to really go into it. You know? <laughs> right. I don't know why I bring Playboy. But, uh, let's, you know, so becoming free is not as easy as I'd like it to be. Yeah, all these eyes that can no longer see in disguise buried into the screens of insignificance. It's like, you know, talking about phones and in our times and just distraction and yeah, and the complications of actually becoming free and how we're sort of enslaved in these times by groupthink in a way. But I was more thinking more on a personal level too. We're introduced to the boogeyman in the second single, Are You Electrified? Now, is that the embodiment of someone real or a cultural meme? Well, I would say, you know, these things manifest as people that are real, but they also are sort of symbolic of whatever's going on within you, you know, and cultural and culturally. Like in in that song, the boogeyman would be like uh, the idea that if you do still have access to your dreams, if you do still have access to your inspiration, 
there are, you know, interspecies predators that are not happy about that because they've lost access to that. And that's an unfortunate reality that nobody really wants to talk about. And certainly you won't get invited to many parties if you keep bringing that shit up, you know? So, like, and that, and that's a good segue, I guess, you made because that does go back to the first line. Becoming free is not as easy as I'd like it to be. It's like, you can't just, like, point blank speak on these things necessarily Mm -hmm. i mean you can but like i said you're gonna find yourself lonely on friday night (laughs) (laughs) which i learned the hard way you know (laughs) so yeah that song is all about and then are you electrified it's all about keeping keeping that part of your spirit alive jumping the turnstile to get into the train that the doors are already open is like the fact that you do have to sometimes commit subversive act to protect your dreams jumping over a turnstile to take a chance so interesting how the thread works throughout this record Uh, in a certain sense you can tell that it was written in like one chunk because there's a mindset when you have a song like The Wanderer and its themes, and then you get down to the song Summertime, which which is a minute long, it's really sparse, and, and the lyrics about holding on. And I feel like all that probably fits into this storyline somehow. Well, that's the last song that we worked on for the rec- for this record. Um, I sent Peter like all nine tracks after I had worked on them for like three weeks in Brooklyn. And... He was like, man, this is great. Let me send you one more so we have a 10-song album. And he sent me the... And and I was like thinking, oh, man, a whole other song. (laughs) And he again was like, send it back to me tomorrow and let me see what you get with it. I'm like, man, how? why does he think I can write this shit so fast? (laughs) Like... But then when he sent it to me and I listened to it, it was like 30 seconds long. And I was like, oh, OK. So, uh, and then I sort of smiled because I was like, oh, he kind of tricked me. Like, he, like <laughs> this is easy. It's like 30 seconds long. I can do this. And I just came up with that. Like uh, summertime, everyone uh, uh, like they're holding on and yet they're running out of chance. Everyone likes to think they're holding on and yet they're running out of chances. It's like some kind of uh, hiccup from the subconscious, because I. But I guess it does have some kind of implied depth to it. Like everyone likes to think they're holding on, and yet they're running out of chances. I mean, I guess it's nice. It's like it's kind of like this uh, get get. You know, it's kind of like to me. I guess it's like a statement that says like you know get on with it. Life is limited. It's like it's fun to think we're immortal, and I think most of us walk around feeling like that a lot of the time. Like you know, but it's not really the case. You know, you have a limited limited time here. You know. Now I heard that you all are already writing more songs, or, or they're already written. I know it's really it's really great. The new songs are really real. There's one that reminds me of Touch of Grey that I just love. <laughs> you know, the Grateful Dead. You right, know, like right. I'm like, wow, this kind of reminds me of that. Like. And there's just a couple more. We wrote another new one uh, yesterday or two days ago, and it's just like, they just keep coming. And I think we have like six new songs now towards the next record. Yeah, and recorded, like recorded. Like, it's like, so it's like really got, the project just has this energy. And it's not like we're really, it's not like we're like super ambitious and motivated. It's just the same way. I mean, I think Peter is really the kind of the engine of that because he just keeps bringing new material and his whole thing is like, it's it's very sort of brass tacks in a way. He's like, yeah, I just don't want to be one of those bands that goes on tour and just plays the album. We need to like have at least six new songs to play. So we ha- so when we go on tour, we have like new songs too. And I'm like, okay. Have you entertained the idea of playing any of each other's old material? We've talked about it. So I think we'll probably end up doing a little of that. But I think maybe mainly that it's going to be about this kind of new project because the project has an energy of like a young, for me, like too, to go back to like the way we started the interview too, of just going through like this sort of transformative experience. I really do feel like this is like a first record for me. Like, I just feel like, you know, I, I feel like I hit some kind of reset button and it just, I, I feel like this project feels like, a new band like i don't really feel like it feels like i've done side projects in the past and they have sort of felt more like that even you know they've just felt more like additions to a career or this that the other whereas to me this feels like more just like this is a new start well as a creative person as an artist as a career artist 
uh, you get years down the line and it becomes a challenge to connect with someone else in the way that you would have in your youth, you know, when it was all fresh and you were just starting a band, which is what I'm getting from you on this. Yeah, well, that's what happened. I mean, it really was like that. Like, it, it really re- it remains like that when we write together. It's just, it's kind of got some sort of naive, naive energy to it that's, yeah. like, really interesting because, obviously, both of us have been doing it quite a while. I mean, him longer than me, obviously, but, you know, I've been doing it a long time, too. So it's it's fun. And on the other side, knowing you how I do, I'm guessing that you're probably already working on a new solo record, too. I mean, I have been. I was before this project. Actually, this project sort of sidelined that mm-hmm. because I was deep in that process. And, and so, But, I mean, it's been five years since I put out a solo record, I think. I mean, The Family was the last solo record I put out, and that was quite a while ago. I don't know how long ago now, but... Well, dude, this is so good. I- I'm so happy for you. Congrats on this. You know, uh, we're friends, but I'm such a big fan, and I'm always so happy to hear stuff like this from you. Uh, this is really an exciting album. Thanks, Kyle. I love talking to you, buddy. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. I'll talk to you soon, Kyle. Thank you so much. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Thanks so much to Joseph Arthur for giving me the call. The debut record from Arthur Buck, self-titled. Hey, don't forget, you can subscribe to Consequence of Sounds at YouTube channel to keep up with your favorite artists and interviews. If you're checking out the podcast version, uh, please do head over to iTunes or Podchaser. Uh, give us a great rating uh, and review. We've got time for that, too. Uh, while you're on the Internet, WFPK.org. That's where I do a show every Monday through Thursday from noon to 3 Eastern. You hear lots of artists like uh, Arthur Buck right here. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network.